articles, when we've prepped the motherboard for sub-zero cooling, we've used a combination of either a conformal coating or nail polish to seal the board. For this motherboard, we're going to use Vaseline as another option. And then we've also, in previous articles, used Art Eraser as a form of insulation as well as a packer around the socket area so no air can get in. For this article, we are going to use Closed Cell Foam Insulation. First thing we're going to do is in our socket area, we're going to trace out all the different components in that area. All I simply do is place a piece of paper in the area, hold it down and simply trace round all of the components. Obviously it doesn't need to be overly neat, you just need to feel out all the parts, looking for your caps, as well as any other components that are in this area. Let's do this quickly. As you can see, you'll get the general idea. All I'm doing is quickly finding all the different components and then marking them out. Once we've done that, we'll actually take that piece of paper We'll remove our motherboard and we'll simply cut it out. Obviously, for this demonstration, we'll simply show you the finished product. Here we have the same piece of paper cut out. So now I can take a piece of closed cell ins insulation, pop that on now, and I can simply mark out as a guide where I want to make the cuts. I can also use the same trace for making multiple pieces if and when I need to replace it. And it is reasonably quick and painless to do. Once we've marked out the entire area, we can remove that and we'll grab a sharp craft knife and we'll simply go through and cut out our pattern. Once we've gone through and cut it all out we should end up with a piece that looks something very similar to that which is basically a pattern of our motherboard socket area. To apply the Vaseline to the board we'll just use an old paintbrush We'll grab our Vaseline, we'll simply open it up here yeah, and we'll just use the paintbrush, we'll simply put some on the end of the brush and then simply paint it onto the board, which we'll demonstrate now. From here, after we've put some Vaseline onto the end of our paintbrush, we will simply paint the socket area with a coating of Vaseline. Using a paintbrush like this makes it very, very quick and easy and also doesn't make a mess all over your fingers and the bristles will let you get into all those hard to reach and tight cavity areas so you can get a good coating of all your components so no moisture will get in and cause a short. Here we now have a nice coating of Vaseline over our socket area. From there, we'll grab our insulation, we'll feed it over the top of the support poles for the GPU unit. Simply slide it down, as you can see, and put it into place. We'll just knead it gently around the components so we get a nice even seal. You'll see this part which is sticking up. On this particular board it is particularly tight 
So I use a small screwdriver just to help to feed it in between that gap, which for the most part I'm going to have to do off camera simply because I don't have the angle to be able to see what I'm doing and actually demonstrate on video. But you'll get the idea of just kneading that down between the mounting bracket and the line of capacitors in here. Once I've got that in place, we'll have a look at the next layers of insulation. Now that we've got the first layer of insulation all set into place, we'll install our next layer on top. Put that into place. Slide that down. We'll add in our thermal compound. And we'll mount our pot. Top bracket on. Mounting lugs and springs and screws. When we put these on, we'll set it down nice and evenly doing two corners at a time so we get even mounting pressure and we're set to go with Vaseline instead of using nail polish or conformal coating and using closed, fo closed foam insulation instead of using the art eraser. Now that we've got the um, template all cut out, when we come to mount these pots later on, it's going to be a lot quicker than having to put the art eraser on and off. So if you are going to be mounting and unmounting the pot often, it can be a more simplistic way of doing it. There you go. Now that we've got everything set up, let's take a closer look at what we're running today. For the motherboard, we've got the Gigabyte GA-X58A UD9. For the CPU, we're running an Intel 980X with a Kingpin Cooling F1 Extreme CPU pot. For graphics, we have the GTX 480. In the memory department, we've got the Corsair GT2000s. And pairing all of this, we're using an Intec 1200- TPQ OC Edition power supply. Now that we've seen what we're running, I'll pop this down here and we'll fire it up. We'll just add a little bit of nitrogen and we'll get it started. What we're going to do now is take a quick look at the Gigabyte overclocking software easy tune 6 and how easy it is to do on the fly multiplier adjustments so we can overclock this 980x here we've got our boot in speed of 5.1 gigahertz we'll just zoom in here and have a quick look at that we can also see that we've got our target temperature of approximately minus 150 degrees our pot nicely boiling away there We'll set this back down and what we'll do from here is we'll simply open the advanced tab in EasyTune 6. We'll go to ratio and while currently we've got a multiplier of 29, we'll simply move the slider to the right and we'll adjust that up to say 31. 
We'll click set and OK. And our multiplier has jumped up and we're now at 5.45 gigahertz. We'll simply grab that slider and go from 31 and we'll slide it up to 34. Push set. Just give this a quick top up. And our clock speed has jumped to 5.984 gigahertz. Very simple as you can see. And from that, we'll just chop up one more jump. Let's say 35. Set that. And we'll zoom in again. And we can see we're now at 6.16 gigahertz. Without too much drama at all. As I want to make an adjustment to some of the settings within the BIOS, I've got a cold boot issue with this particular CPU which means it simply will not do a hard reset boot at anything below minus 110 degrees if I alter settings within the BIOS. So just like we used in the last video, we'll need to use a propane torch to bring the temperature up to approximately minus 100 to minus 110 so I can reboot and adjust settings within the BIOS. Here you can see that the current temperature of the pot is minus 134 degrees. So I'll simply grab my propane torch, pop it in, ignite it to help warm up the pot. You can imagine if we simply left it for the ambient air temperature to do this, it could take quite some time. Here you see that the temperature is falling or rising reasonably quickly. Minus 112, minus 110, minus 109. So it's now at a suitable temperature so I can reboot and change settings in the BIOS without having a cold boot bug loop. 2D benchmarks are somewhat boring to watch. So what I'm going to do is simply demonstrate a couple of the benchmarks at a safe 6.1 gigahertz to give you an idea of what we do in competitive benching and then I'll add the maximum screenshots to the end of this video. Here we've got the SuperPi window open. For competitive benching we'll use 1M and 32M. I've currently got it set to 1M because it's nice and quick. Only 6 or so seconds to quickly run through this. Here you can see the benchmark running. And with very average settings at 6.1 gigahertz, I've got a time of 6.875 seconds. We'll close that. We can open up PI Fast. PI Fast is another very quick benchmark. It's running through as we speak. And it gives us a total time of 14.19 seconds. I'll just simply open up CPU Z. I'll zoom in. You can see we're running at 6.104 gigahertz. Six cores, 12 threads. Obviously when I increase the speeds so I can get my maximum screenshots, we will drop um, hyper-threading off and probably just run six cores.